And before you say I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I have proof as to how I went from a 2.8 GPA student from having average class grades or lower to having astonishingly above average A's, B's, in fact, A pluses, and being one of the smartest students in my school. And I'm making this video to help you and show you my ways and how I was able to do that. So I'm gonna break it down into two steps, but in those steps, we're gonna have A, B, C, D in each of them. So now the first step is your mindset. You clicking this video to watch already means you've taken that first step into becoming that high achiever, that good student at school, that comes back feeling accomplished and shows his parent his grades and is proud of himself. Number two is you gotta listen in class more. And what I mean by that is not just sitting there looking at the teacher, actually raising your hands, asking questions. You might feel shy or not on to do it just because of you feel like people may judge you and whatnot. But you gotta understand that you're in that college or in that high school for you, nobody else. You're gonna leave there with what you, how much effort you put in. And also realize the people that you think are judging you, most of the times they don't, they don't even matter. Part B, listening in class. Another reason why you're not able to listen in class is because of your friends. That's why I suggest you sit in a different place from your friends or in fact, go to sit in the front. Because your friends, of course, they're your friends. You're gonna get easily distracted. And if you wanna try something new, they might be like, what is this guy doing? He's trying to be smart for one day. And then they might judge you and you might feel hurt because you're trying to come out of your comfort zone and do better for yourself, but nobody is following you. Such a thing is life. You're doing it for you. And besides, once you break out of that box, of the dumb student or the student that doesn't do as good. Now, those friends that used to look down on you are gonna start come up asking you for help and you're gonna be the one teaching them. And that is a very rewarding and good feeling I one should have. Another thing is doing your homework on time. Now, my rule of thumb is as soon as this class is over, school is over, I'm sitting down in there doing that homework, literally before I go home. Cause I know once I go home, I'm not gonna wanna do it. I'll probably be on the game or probably be doing something else, either making content like this or talking to my friends or something. Which is why I recommend having the school be a place that you just go there to study. And when you're outside of there, you can do whatever you wanna do. So as soon as I'm done with a class, you know there are about four periods, classes or five periods. And sometimes you have breaks in between. I'm not saying doing the lunch, but if you wanna do the lunch, go ahead. But sometimes the teachers even give you 10, 15 minutes after class, we could do whatever you want to do. Within that time, you could do the homework and then go to the teacher and ask them for help. And that way, they see, oh, this student is actually putting effort. They want to learn. And then watch them actually start not necessarily favoring you, but start making more eye contact with you and making sure that you understand. And then that that's just a placebo effect. That just makes you want to do it even more because you're starting to see, oh, they actually want me to study. They actually want me to do this. Part C. Study one week before the exam. Don't do it a day before the exam. I know, it's very tempting. You know, you see the exam and be like, man, I got time, I, 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 have, I have so many things I gotta do. But if you just put 10 minutes every day, five minutes in fact, every day, studying before the exam, it eventually compounds up. You could set reminders on your phone, be like, hey Siri or hey Google, remind me at 5 p.m. or so to do my homework. Here, I seen the study. It said, as soon as you wake up and you were to do something, your brain is triggered into flow state. So if you were to wake up and start doing your homework or start studying for that one exam that's coming up, you're answering flow state and that makes you want to do things more. And then that's just you reassuring yourself, oh, I am this person. I am becoming a studious person, a studious student. Part D, make new friends. Your friends, there's this quote that says, Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. And that quote goes a long way. And I associate myself with that quote since I was 16, 16, 17. And it made me realize that truly, the type of people you associate yourself with is who you're gonna become. In school, you're in high school, you may feel shy or nervous or anxious, but I guarantee you those people, same people that you're about to go talk to, they are shy, nervous, and anxious too. And if you were to go to, especially the smart ones, if you were to go there and be like, hey, I didn't understand this homework. Do you mind explaining to me, explain it to me? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna wanna help you.
because they're like, oh, the student actually came to talk to me or, or, or whatnot. And the study also says that people who are able to explain things to other people makes them smarter. So in fact, that student is getting smarter by helping you. So it's a win-win situation. You're, you're winning, you're learning, and they're learning even better. Now, B, the second part of what I'm telling you to do is make friends with the teacher. You gotta realize that teachers at school are actually human beings as well. And even I fell into the spectrum of just seeing them as, oh, they're just teachers, they don't care about me. Because like I said, I came up from having, bro, Ds, Fs. In fact, E's, bro, 50%. Here's proof, my GPA. I couldn't find the one that goes all the way back, but this is me with a 3.0, but I started with a 2.8 in ninth grade. I failed math and English. English, bro. Who fails English? I got a 61 in that class. But what I'm trying to say is that I was able to do that. And what I did and what worked for me was what I'm telling you right now. I made friends with the teachers, letting them know, hey, I really want to do this. I really want to learn. I'm, I'm willing to put in the work and the effort to get better because I understand that my education is my future, that my education is always going to determine the rest of my life. And if I don't prioritize this now, I am pretty much telling myself I don't love myself and I don't care about myself. And it got to a point for me that after making friends with the teachers and trusting them, they even started putting the grade for me before I did the work. Now that's a level of trust that you can reach too, especially in high school. Teachers are so cool and lenient compared to college that I'm in now. I'm 20 years old in college. These people don't care. Unless, like I said, you go to them and tell them, hey, I want to put in work. But in general, they don't care. Unlike high school where the teachers are telling you, hey, do this. Hey, don't do this. Hey, come here for work. You know what I'm saying? But if you actually go up to them, that makes them more inclined to help you. And like I said, they put in the assignment graded for me without me turning it in. Like a A, in fact, a 90 over 100, just because they know I'm that student, you know? And sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, you could also do it, just half-ass it, just because they already put it in for you. But you're only cheating yourself. But if you already understand what the criteria is, you could just do it, you know, do whatever you want. Another way I was able to go to from a 2.8 to a 4.0 GPA in high school was that I took college classes and AP classes. Now. College classes are hard. Same thing with AP classes. I believe I took AP Literature, AP Psych, and English 105 in college because it was a college right next to my school, Arizona University. And I just walked down there as soon as I was doing class. And that was my senior year of high school, I believe. So I took those two classes back to back and I won't lie to you, it was difficult because during that time, I was also a track, track athlete and I was running track and field full time. Like, I was really, really competitive. And yeah, taking those classes are very difficult, but they're very rewarding. And it tends to open your mind, open your mind and make you think differently. Like for instance, the AP psychology classes, it teaches you things about grit in psychology. But grit, for example, is like I said, I was a track athlete. I was a track athlete. And grit is very important. Because before the meet, or let's say you lose you lose you, you lose a race or you tore your hamstring or something. That's what's gonna get you through, cause that's gonna give. That's what's, that's what's gonna give you faith to be like, oh, this happened, but I can still recover. I can still do this, and that also transforms into your education. Be like, okay, I may be failing right now, but I know if I do this and this, talk to the teacher, make new friends, etc., my grades are gonna improve. Now, part two, C. You're going to want to fight the teacher. Okay, no, I'm not mean. I don't mean literally fight the teacher. But as in, fight them as in, teachers are humans, they make mistakes. I can't name for you how many times a teacher has made mistake with my grades. Like as in, I can't even count them. But that's where you gotta be accountable to yourself and actually go look at the report card, especially when they give you the interim report, where they're giving you the report card of in between the semester. You gotta look through and be like, hey, I turned this in, teacher, you didn't put the grade in for me. And they'll be like, oh, apologies, my bad. Or if they didn't, if you didn't do it to how they want, you could tell them, all right, tell me how you want me to do this and I'll do it for you. Like I said, that also shows them that, yo, I care, I, I'm trying to be here. Yes, some teachers, they don't care, but then you, you at least know you're putting in the effort and you can take them to the principal and the principal will handle that. Because the majority of the teachers who teach at the school 
are there for you and they're there to help you. That's their passion, teaching, making people, helping people grow, just like how I'm doing right now. That goes as well to you having integrity, not just lying about, hey, you didn't do this for me. Actually seeing where they messed up and say, hey, go there. And that's them having integrity to put in that great back for you and helping you out. And D, just like I said before, integrity. You actually doing what the right thing is to do. Saying to yourself, hey, I'm going to do this. And you actually doing it. Not just because you want to do it, but because you understand it's beneficial to you and your future. And that was the main, honestly, main goal. Because I want to make my parents proud, proud of me. And myself proud of me. And my kids. And to look back and be like, wow, Chris, I am really proud of you. You did a good job. Because I really came from a 2.8 to a 4.0. Like, that still baffles me, bro. I was like, nah, I'm done with school. I'm not, I'm not doing this. This is not for me. There's some, definitely something out there for me. But it's like, if you keep on thinking like that, you're going to end up not doing that stuff. Because you also got to understand knowledge is power. Yes, school is not for everybody. But the more you do hard things, the more gray matter forms in your head. And the more gray matter forms in your head, the smarter you become. So you may be thinking, hey, I'm cut off for entrepreneurship or business. But if you don't train that gray matter now while you're in school, doing what you don't want to do, but still gaining that knowledge, it's going to be harder long term, long, long run, because right now you're young and the brain could handle so many attacks at once. Which goes on to say stress is good, by the way, doing so many things at once is good, but still having time to do and take off your priorities, say, do my homework immediately after school is over. So when I go home, I don't got to worry about it so I could easily go party, go with my friends, go to the crib and play sports or play games and whatever. That type of stress is good, it's motivating. Last but not least, I wanna tell you the power of habits. This is from one of my favorite books I ever read, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. I really recommend it. It's a good book if you wanna start reading because it's not as boring as the rest are where they just don't have pictures and et cetera. These have pictures and whatnot. But this quote says, I am your, I am your constant companion, who am I? I am your greatest helper or heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I am completely at your command. Half the things you do might just as well turn over to me and I'll be able to do them quickly and correctly. I am easily managed. You must merely be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done and after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. I am the servant of all great individuals and the last of all failures as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I have made failures. I am not a machine, though I work with all the precision of a machine, plus the intelligence of a human. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. Make no difference to me. It makes. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will place the word at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? Habit. The habit. The building block of everything we humans innately do. Everything I told you right now is gonna take you practice to repeatedly, repeatedly do it, do it, get in tune with it. Every week, maybe Monday, you do the first thing I told you. A. Hey, tomorrow, Tuesday, you do the other thing, and then eventually it compounds up, and you start becoming the next person. Next year, January first, or whenever your school starts, put these into work. And if it doesn't work, come back in, thumbs down this video, comment saying it doesn't work, and let me know what I just said to you was BS. I guarantee you it was not. But thanks for watching. I really hope this video helps you out. And I really hope I was able to give you some valuable tips on how to change your life for the better and how I was able to change mine from a 2.0 to a 4.0. Like the video and subscribe and have a good day. See ya.